Good morning all. Now here I have three Arduino Unos. This is the genuine article. If you look on the back you have all the markings that uh, indicate that this is a genuine Arduino made in Italy, open source electronics prototyping platform. This is an Uno Revision 3. But the other two are clones. Now this one looks very similar, has the uh, full-size USB type B connector and a dual inline chip but this was about five pounds and this one was not much more than three pounds. So how much is a genuine Arduino Uno if I want to buy one today? So here we are on the Maplin website. Yes I searched for Uno and here we have an Uno Revision 3 mainboard and it's £24.99. So this genuine Arduino Uno is 25 quid. Now I don't regret buying this of course because buying the genuine article supports the project and uh, Arduino if they sell enough products will continue to thrive. But there's a huge temptation to buy clone Arduinos at £5 or even a little bit above £3. Now it's hard to see how we could beat uh, the three pound price tag on this uh, Arduino Uno, but I wondered if I could do it by building my own Arduino Uno on breadboard. Now in order for this to work, I'm going to have to cheat. I'm gonna to have to leave off everything that isn't absolutely essential from uh, an Uno like this when I make my breadboard version. And I'm also going to have to cheat by using some pre-made assemblies. So for example, the USB to serial, I'm going to have to cheat by using a pre-made CH340 adapter. And I must admit, I do have my doubts as to whether even the massively cut down Arduino Uno that I'm going to build with the essential components and the USB to serial adapter will come in under the price of this three pounds Arduino. So this is more going to be an example of let's see what makes up an Arduino than actually let's see if we can make a cheap Arduino. So where do we start? Well, we need the chip, of course. Now this is an Atmel 80 Mega 328P dash PU. And I've bought one that's pre-programmed with the Arduino Uno bootloader. And that does save a lot of time and hassle. So I bought this, it's the 80 Mega 328P-PU microcontroller with Arduino Uno bootloader. Now this was $1.97 and it came from Alice110 1983. Now I also bought some breadboards, I'm cheating again because I bought five, $4.86 also from Alice. So I push the uh, chip into the breadboard. Now the next thing we need is a crystal. And the Arduinos use a 16 megahertz crystal. So here's the 16 megahertz crystal. Let's see where that came from. Well, once again, of course, that came from Alice. I cheated again. I bought 10 of them, but it was only 99 cents. So now where do we connect the crystal? Well, for that, we need to look at the pin assignments for the 80 mega 328P. So this page is pretty essential for this project. It's on the Arduino website and it's the 80 mega 168 uh, 328 Arduino pin mapping and here are all the pin assignments and how they relate to the Arduino's analog pins and digital pins. Now if we zoom in here we can see that on pins 9 and 10 we connect the crystal and also on pin 8 we've got ground. So there's the crystal on pins 9 and 10. Now the reason pin 8 being right next door and being ground is useful is because we now need to fit in these two load capacitors, 20 picofarads each, and they can go between the crystal pins and ground. So this works. One of the capacitors goes from the uh, left-hand crystal pin to ground, and the other capacitor goes from the right-hand crystal pin to ground. Now another component we're going to need is an LED and this will go on the Arduino's D13 output 
uh, so that we can run a blink program, flash the LED on and off, and that way we'll know that the Arduino is working. So let's have a look at where this connects. Okay, so here's digital pin D13. It's on chip pin 19, and ground is only three pins away on pin 22. That's very handy. So this is a 28 pin chip. That means that this corner pin is 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So my resistor side, that's the sort of positive side of the LED, goes to 19, 20, 21, 22. Uh, ground is on pin 22. So the LED fits in there pretty nicely. Now, believe it or not, that's pretty much it. There isn't much more required other than this capacitor and our USB to serial converter. I'm going to turn this board around because the wiring happens to work a bit better this way round. And I'm going to put the USB to serial converter in this second breadboard. And now I need some wires to start hooking up the converter to the chip. So here are a bunch of little uh, connecting wires with pins on the end. Now, amazingly, there are no black ones in this short length. So I'm going to have to use, I think, white for ground, but I'll try and make all the other colors relevant to the signals. So let's have another look at the pin mapping. Now, to connect to the USB to serial converter, which is going to provide our power, we're going to need VCC on 7, Ground is on 8, but it's also on 22. That might be more convenient. And then we're going to need RX and TX. Well, they're on pins 2 and 3. And Reset, which is on pin 1. So VCC is pin 7 on the chip, which is there. And on the converter, it's the third pin in. So that goes there like that. Now ground is where I connected my LED to here, so that's my ground. I'm using white and ground is the first pin on the USB to serial converter. Now the remaining pins on the chip are pins 1, reset, 2, which is RX, and 3, which is TX. And they go across on these uh, orange, yellow, and green wires to TX and RX on the USB to serial converter. And this pin here, the green wire, which is on pin one on the chip, goes to DTR, but not directly to DTR. We have to connect it through the remaining capacitor, which is this one up here, 100 nanofarads. So there's the 100 nanofarad capacitor. That comes from DTR on the USB to serial converter and into reset on the chip. Now this is to shorten the pulse because DTR, data terminal ready, isn't the required short pulse length. So this capacitor acts as a differentiator, shortens the pulse, and that resets the Arduino to ensure that it synchronizes with us sending sketches through this converter. And that's actually it. That is our minimalist Arduino Uno. We've got the LED so that we can see uh, the Blink program working. So all I need to do now is connect a USB cable, and this is just an extender cable into my PC and fire up the IDE. So I'm just going to plug that cable into my PC, see what happens. Well, red lights come on on the converter, and we did get a brief flash on the LED that's on the chip, but nothing more is happening. So let's run up the software and open up the Blink program. So here's the Arduino IDE, the integrated development environment. And what I'm going to do now is from file, uh, examples, I'm going to go up to basics and if I can get to it, blink. And that simply uh, switches the LED on and off for one second at a time. Now under tools, board, I need to select Arduino Uno. And under serial port, whatever the serial port number is of my USB to serial converter, it's COM5 on this one. And now from file, I need to do an upload. Let's watch the uh, compiling progress. And then we'll watch the actual uploading. There goes uploading. I'll do it again with the camera on the actual unit. 
So let's look at the USB to serial converter while I hit upload. It's compiling at the moment. That's uploading. The blue light comes on. And we have our one second on, one second off, flashing red LED. Now, not convinced? Okay, well then let's put in the signature double flash. So we have uh, a short delay high, short delay low, short delay high, long delay low. That should give us a double blink. And here's the result on the breadboard, a double blinking LED. So, still not convinced that this is a genuine homemade Arduino Uno? Well, let's do something a bit more complicated. Let's attach an I squared C OLED and load in some software to do some graphical on-screen examples. Now, for I squared C, we need four pins, VCC, ground, and these two up here on pins 28 and 27, which are SCL and SDA. So this should be quite easy. Uh, VCC and ground we already know because they're the red and the white wires going to the chip. And then SCL and SDA were these two pins here on the top corner of the chip, 28 and 27. Let's hook it up. So here it is. Now the colors aren't very logical. I just use whatever I happen to have in terms of wires, but essentially we've got VCC, uh, sorry, ground up here, VCC over the other side, and then S clock I think was on pin 28, SDA was on pin 27. So that's all hooked up. Now what we need to do is bring in a suitable sketch. Now I'm quite liking at the moment the graphics uh, library U8G for uh, OLED. So let's go to examples down to the U8G lib and in here there's one graphics test. So let's open that up. Now you need to make one change to this. So in this file there are a whole load of comments uh, or at least uh, these specifications all commented out and you have to uncomment the one that relates to your device. So we need an SSD 1306 because that's what's in the OLED. We don't want software or hardware SPI. We actually want this one, I squared C. So I need to take the comments out on that line. So that's done. Now I'm just going to hit upload. Now for some reason these examples take a very long time to compile. So let's let it compile and then wait for the upload. Right, that is now uploading because there's a blue light on the USB to serial converter. But we don't have anything. Something must be wrong. Well, for some reason I needed to press reset on the uh, USB to serial converter, but that's now working. We're getting uh, a graphics display of graphical elements, lines and uh, triangles on the OLED. So there it is. There's a working homemade Arduino Uno. It's very cut down. We've not bothered with uh, anything that's not essential to the operation of this thing, but we know it works. It blinks the LED and it also runs much more complex software as proved by the fact that we're driving this OLED. But is this cheaper than this? This is the clone Arduino Uno. I think it was $4.98. Now if we add up the parts of this, breadboard about a dollar, the chip was $2.00 the crystal and the capacitors and the LED, probably about a dollar for that lot, and another dollar for the USB to serial converter. Now, if you want to include wires, we're getting very close to the $5 cost of this. Maybe you could argue that we could build this for about $4, but uh, it's not so much a price issue as a, an issue of understanding how these things work. Anyway, I'm pleased. I've now got four Arduino Unos, the genuine thing, couple of clones and my homemade one. Cheerio!